I would be focusing on the aspects of uh, the decision by the Monetary Policy Committee and in the later part I have some important announcements to make and I request your patience. The Monetary Policy Committee met on 4th, 5th and 6th August for its second meeting of 2021 which is the 24th under its ages completing four years of its operation under the new monetary policy framework. The MPC sifted through domestic and global conditions and evaluated their unfolding impact on the overall outlook for India and the world. At the end of its deliberations, the MPC voted unanimously to leave the policy repo rate unchanged at 4% and continue with the accommodative stance of monetary policy as long as necessary to revive growth, mitigate the impact of COVID-19 while ensuring that inflation remains within the target going forward. The marginal standing facility rate and the bank rate remain unchanged at 4.25%. The reverse repo rate also stands unchanged at 3.35%. I thank the MPC members for their valuable contributions to the policy decision taken today. The Reserve Bank of India is perhaps the only central bank in the world to have set up a special quarantine facility with its officers, staff and service providers numbering about 200 for critical operations to ensure business continuity in banking and financial market operations and payment systems. Other teams in the RBI have ensured availability of digital banking channels, ATMs, internet and mobile banking, cyber security, redress of customer grievances and carried out sustained campaigns about safe digital transactions through RBI Kehta Hai. Our teams have also provided logistical support and engaged in analysis and research to back the conduct of the financial and monetary policies. I am proud of all of them for their tireless commitment to public service. I would also like to applaud all employees of banks and financial entities for ensuring uninterrupted operations in these trying times. Our gratitude also goes out to all COVID warriors, medical and health personnel, police and other law enforcement agencies, authorities at various levels and others. In the MPC's assessment, global economic activity has remained fragile and in retrenchment in the first half of 2020. A renewed surge in COVID-19 infections in major economies in July has subdued, the, has subdued some early signs of revival that had appeared in May and June. Global financial markets, however, have been buoyant with return of risk of sentiment inserting a disconnect from the underlying state of the real economy. Portfolio inflows to emerging markets have resumed and their currencies have also appreciated. The Global Manufacturing Purchase Managers Index PMI and Global Services PMI rose to 50.3 and 50.5 respectively in July, moving back to the expansion zone. The World Trade Organization has estimated that the volume of merchandise trade shrank by 3% year-on-year in Q1 and early estimates suggest a fall of 18.5% in Q2. CPI inflation remains largely subdued across major advanced economies, primarily due to benign fuel prices and soft aggregate demand since March. In most of the emerging market economies, however, CPI inflation after easing in April and May rose in June amidst cost push pressures. Domestic food inflation remains elevated across most of the economies since the onset of the pandemic. The MPC noted that in India too, economic activity had started to recover from the lows of April and May. However, surges of fresh infections have forced reclamping of lockdowns in several cities and states. Consequently, several high frequency indicators have leveled off. The agriculture sector's prospects are strengthened by the progress of the southwest monsoon and the expansion in the total area zone under Kharif crops by 13.9% up to July 31 over the previous year that is over the corresponding period of the previous year. 
Industrial production remained in contraction, albeit at a moderated pace in May. The Manufacturing Purchase Managers uh, Index PMI shrank in July for the fourth consecutive month. PMI services remained in contractionary zone in July, although the downturn eased relative to the June reading. Headline inflation, which was 5.8% in March, was placed at 6.1% in the provisional estimates for June 2020. Inflation pressures were evident across all subgroups. Households one year ahead inflation expectations were lower than their three months ahead expectations in July 2020 round of the Reserve Bank's survey, indicating their anticipation of lower inflation over the longer horizon. Producer sentiment on input prices remained muted as their salary outgoes fell. The selling price contracted in Q1 in April to June round of the Reserve Bank's Industrial Outlook Survey. India's merchandise exports contracted for the fourth successive month in June 2020, although the pace of fall moderated. Imports fell, uh, fell sharply in June in a broad-based manner, reflecting weak domestic demand and low international crude oil prices. The merchandise trade balance recorded a surplus in June of the order of US dollar 0.8 billion after a gap of over 18 years. India's foreign exchange reserves have increased by 56.8 billion in the current financial year that is in 2021 so far during April to July to 534.6 billion US dollars as on July 31st 2020 equivalent to 13.4 months of imports. The ratio of foreign exchange reserves to external debt has gone up from 76% at the end of March 2019 to about 85.5% at the end of March 2020. Let me now focus on the outlook for growth and inflation. Against this backdrop, the MPC was of the view that supply chain disruptions on account of COVID-19 persist with implications for both food and non-food prices. A more favorable food inflation outlook may emerge as the bumper rubby crop harvest eases prices of cereals, especially if open market sales and public distribution of take are expanded on the back of significantly higher procurement. Nonetheless, upside risks to food prices do remain. The abatement of price pressures in key vegetables is delayed and remains contingent upon normalization of supplies. Protein-based food items also could also emerge as a pressure point. High domestic taxes on petroleum products have resulted, have resulted in elevated domestic pump prices and will impart broad-based cost push pressures going forward. Taking into consideration all these factors, the MPC expects headline inflation to remain elevated in Q2 2021, but likely to ease in the second half, aided by favorable base effects. As regards the outlook for growth, the MPC noted that recovery in rural economy is expected to be robust, buoyed by the progress, progress in Kharif sowing. Manufacturing firms expect domestic demand to recover gradually from Q2 and to sustain through Q1 21-22. On the other hand, consumer confidence turned more pessimistic in July relative to the preceding round of Reserve Bank's survey. External demand is expected to remain anemic under the weight of global recession and contraction in global trade. Taking into consideration the above factors, real GDP growth in the first half of the year is estimated to remain in the contraction zone. For the year 2021 as a whole, real, rate, real GDP growth is also estimated to be negative. An early contraction or rather an early, early containment of COVID-19 pandemic may impart an upside to the outlook. A more protracted spread of the pandemic, deviations from the forecast of a normal monsoon and global financial market volatility are the key downside risks. The MPC noted that in an environment of unprecedented stress, supporting recovery of the economy assumes primacy in the conduct of monetary policy. While the space for further monetary policy action is available, it is important to use it judiciously to maximize the beneficial effects on the underlying economy. At the same time, the MPC is conscious of its medium-term inflation target. 
the headline inflation prints of April and May 2020 are obscured by the spike in food prices and cost push pressures. Meanwhile, the cumulative reduction of 250 basis points is working its way through the economy, lowering interest rates in money, bond and credit markets and narrowing down the spreads. Given the uncertainty surrounding the inflation outlook and extremely weak state of the economy in the midst of an unprecedented shock from the ongoing pandemic, the MPC decided to keep the policy rate on hold while remaining watchful for a durable reduction in inflation to use the available space to support the revival of the economy. There are more details available in the MPC's resolution which will be uploaded immediately after this statement is over. So I would encourage uh, everyone to have a look at the uh, resolution of the MPC which contains even greater details. Uh, living with the pandemic has improved the way we manage it. Working from home, virtual meetings and contactless transactions. Throughout this traumatic period, one thing has stood out the indomitable spirit of humanity, the inner conviction that whatever be the challenge, we have the innate resilience to combat them, overcome them and emerge victorious. I continue to be an eternal optimist and I feel Mahatma Gandhi should inspire us. And in Mahatma Gandhi's words, if our resolve is firm and our conviction clear, it would mean half the battle won, unquote. Let me now highlight, you know, against this backdrop, uh, I would like to highlight the impact of the monetary and liquidity measures so far taken by the Reserve Bank to mitigate the negative fallout of COVID-19. I, I thought it necessary to point out some of these aspects which are known, which are obviously available in the public domain. But I often hear uh, questions being raised in the public space about the effectiveness of the rate cuts that the MPC has undertaken over the past, uh, you know, starting from February 19 and more uh, in a more pronounced manner after the onset of the pandemic. So I thought it is necessary that uh, let me in brief highlight some of the, you know, the impact in our assessment, the impact of the monetary and liquidity policy measures which have been undertaken by the Reserve Bank. It may be noted that transmission of the rate cuts by MPC would not have been possible to the extent achieved so far without creating comfortable liquidity conditions. The overriding objective was to prevent financial markets from, from freezing up, ensure normal functioning of financial intermediaries, ease the stress faced by households and businesses, and keep the lifeblood of finance flowing. This is achieved by infusing large amounts of liquidity in and out of the system through injections and absorptions through the LAF. In the process, the easing of financial conditions has actually enhanced monetary transmission and thereby the effectiveness of MPC's accommodative stance and actions. What is more, the injections of liquidity including through open market operations, special operations for, uh, you know, what we call uh, uh, you know, the open market operations, then special operations by way of uh, what we call Operation Twist, the LTROs, the TLTROs, and the Forex interventions. There being that, and this is very important to note, all this liquid, liquidity which are being injected into the market and which is there in the system, they are being fully sterilized by absorptions through the reverse repo while preventing a seizure of money markets under extreme risk aversion and uncertainty. And this is a very important point which I think uh, I feel and all of us in RBI feel needs to be appreciated. Another aspect that needs to be recognized is that RBI's open market purchases are aimed at reducing funding costs for private sector entities that issue instruments in the market which are usually priced off the GSEC yield as the benchmark. In fact, it is worthwhile to see who is benefiting from the RBI's actions. Borrowing costs in financial markets have dropped to their lowest in a decade on the back of abundant liquidity. Interest rates on instruments like the three-month treasury bill, commercial paper and certificates of deposit have fully priced in the reduction in the policy rate and are in fact trading below the policy rate in the secondary market. Commercial papers of NBFCs have softened to 3.8% 
and on July 31st. Rates have fallen to 3.4 percent on July 31st, 2020 for non-NBFC borrowers. So as you can see, the cost of borrowing for NBFC borrowers and non-NBFC borrowers have significantly come down. And the NBFC sector, which was in stress post ILFS throughout, you know, in the early part of 2019, have now access to funding at reasonable costs. With, liquidity, with illiquidity premier dissipating under the impact of Operation Twist and TLTRO1 spreads of three-year AAA rated corporate bonds over similar tenor securities uh, have also declined from 276 basis points on March 26th to 50 basis points. So on March 26th, that is on March 27th, if you remember, we announced our first set of measures to deal with the onset of the pandemic, to deal with the COVID crisis. And that was on March 27th. So March 26th, the uh, spread on AAA rated corporate bonds, and I'm referring to the three-year AAA rated corporate bonds, it was 276 basis points over the uh, you know, GSEC of similar maturity. And that spread over GSEC of similar maturity has come down from 276 basis points on, from March 26th to 50 basis points on July 31st, a significant reduction indeed. And in fact, in all other categories, AA, whether it is AA plus or AA uh, bonds, they have also considerably narrowed. Even the lowest investment grade bonds, that is triple B minus, Spreads have also come down by 125 basis points as on July 31st. Lower borrowing costs have led to record primary issuance of corporate bonds of the order of rupees 2.09 lakh crore in the first quarter, that is April to June 2020 21. In particular, market financing conditions for NBFCs, which had become challenging, have largely stabilized in the wake of targeted policy measures undertaken by the Reserve Bank. Abundant liquidity has also supported other segments of financial markets. In particular, mutual funds have stabilized since the Franklin Templeton episode. Assets under the management of debt mutual funds have also recovered and significantly improved to 13.89 lakh crore as on July 31st, 2020. Monetary transmission has also improved considerably. The weighted average lending rate on fresh loopy loans sanctioned by banks declined by 162 basis points during the period February 2019 to June 2020. I'm referring to February 2019 because that is when the accommodative stance of Reserve Bank's policy, monetary policy and the liquidity injections, you know, the whole cycle and the accommodative stance and the rate cut cycle, it began in 2019. So between February 2019 to June 2020, the uh, Weighted average lending rate on fresh rupee loans sanctioned by banks, they have come down by 162 basis points. Now, of which 91 basis points transmission was witnessed during the month of March 2020 to June 2020. That is from March to June in the post-pandemic period. Now, let me now turn to announcing some additional measures. With COVID-19 infections rising unabated under fragile macroeconomic and financial conditions, we propose to undertake additional developmental and regulatory measures with several objectives, and they are as follows. Number one, to enhance liquidity support for financial markets and other stakeholders. Number two, to further ease financial stress caused by COVID-19 disruptions while strengthening credit discipline. Number three, to improve the flow of credit Number four, to deepen digital payment systems. Number five, augment customer safety in check payments. And number six, facilitate innovations across the financial sector by leveraging on technology. These are the objectives behind the policy measures which we are going to announce, which I am going to announce today on behalf of the Reserve Bank. In the worst peacetime health and economic crisis of the last 100 years that we face today, the regulatory response has to be dynamic, proactive and balanced. While designing the major announcements that I am making today, we have ensured that necessary safeguards are in place for preserving financial stability. We are fully mindful of RBI's responsibility to maintain financial 
to maintain stability of the financial sector. While I am outlining the main measures, the statement on developmental and regulatory measures will address them in greater detail. And this statement, as I mentioned earlier, will be uploaded after my statement, after my this statement uh, is over. Among the various measures that I am going to announce, the first one relates to additional special liquidity facility. Additional special liquidity facility of rupees 10,000 crore will be provided at the policy repo rate uh, to the NABAD and uh, to the uh, National Housing Bank. And this will consist of 5,000 crore to National Housing Bank NHB to shield the housing sector from liquidity disruptions and augment the flow of finance to the sector through housing finance companies. And it will also consist of 5,000 crore to the National Bank for Agriculture and Rural Development, that is NABAD, to ameliorate the stress being faced by smaller non-bank finance companies, NBFCs and macro-finance institutions in obtaining access to liquidity. Uh, the next announcement relates to resolution framework for COVID-19 related stress. The Prudential Framework on Resolution of Stressed Assets, dated June 7, 2019, provides a principle-based resolution framework for addressing borrower defaults. Any resolution plan implemented under the Prudential Framework which involves granting of any concession on account of financial difficulty of the borrower entails an asset reclassification, asset classification downgrade except when accompanied by a change in ownership subject to certain specified conditions. The disruptions caused by COVID-19 have led to heightened financial stress for borrowers across the board. A large number of firms that otherwise maintain a good track record under existing promoters face the challenge of their debt burden becoming disproportionate relative to their cash flow generation abilities. This can potentially impact their long-term viability and pose significant financial stability risks if it becomes widespread. Accordingly, it has been decided to provide a window under the June 7 prudential framework of the Reserve Bank, that is uh, June 7 of 2019. Under that framework, it has been decided to provide a window to enable lenders to implement a resolution plan in respect of eligible corporate, ex corporate exposures without change in ownership, as well as in respect of personal loans, while classifying such exposures as standard assets subject to specific specified conditions. In the light of past experience with regard to use of regulatory forbearance, necessary safeguards have been incorporated, including prudent entry norms, clearly defined boundary conditions, specific binding covenants, independent validation, and strict post-implementation performance monitoring. The underlying theme of this resolution window is preservation of the soundness of the Indian banking sector. The Reserve Bank is also constituting an expert committee uh, with uh, uh, the chairmanship of uh, Sri K.V. Kamath, which will make recommendations to the RBI on the required financial parameters along with sector-specific benchmark ranges for such parameters to be factored into resolution plans. The expert committee shall also undertake a process validation of resolution plans for the borrower accounts above a specified threshold. The details of the resolution framework as spelled out in part B of the MPC resolution and in the relevant circular, both of which will be issued immediately after this press statement. The next announcement, that is the third one, relates to restructuring of MSME debt. A restructuring framework of, for MSMEs that were in default but standard as on January 1st, 2020 is already in place. The scheme has provided relief to a large number of MSMEs. With COVID-19 continuing to disrupt normal functioning and cash flows, the stress in the MSME sector has got accentuated, warranting further support. Accordingly, it has been decided that stressed MSME borrowers will be made eligible for restructuring their debt under the existing prov uh, framework, provided their accounts with the concerned lender were classified as standard as on March 1st, 2020. This restructuring will have to be implemented by 31st March, 2021. 
The fourth announcement relates to advances against gold ornaments and jewellery. As per extent guidelines, loans sanctioned by banks against pledge of gold ornaments and jewellery for non-agricultural purposes should not exceed 75% of the value of gold ornaments and jewellery. With a view to mitigating the impact of COVID-19 on households, it has been decided to increase the permissible loan to value, what they call LTV ratio for such loans to 90%. This relaxation shall be available till 31st March 2021. The fifth announcement relates to banks investment in debt mutual funds and debt exchange traded funds, capital charge for market risk. As per RBI's extent Basel 3 guidelines, if a bank holds a debt instrument directly, it would have to allocate lower capital as compared to holding the same debt instrument through a mutual fund or exchange traded fund. It has been decided to harmonize the differential treatment existing currently. This will result in substantial capital saving for the banks and it, will also, it is also expected to give a boost to the corporate bond market. Number six, uh, we have a review of priority sector lending guidelines. With a view to aligning the guidelines with emerging national priorities and bring sharper focus on inclusive development, the prior sector lending guidelines have also been reviewed. An incentive framework is now being put in place for banks to address the regional disparities in the flow of priority sector credit. Now this is, has been visible for quite some time. Most of priority sector lending gets concentrated in certain areas and whereas there are large number of, I mean several other states where the pri priority sector lending is not uh, uh, what it should be. So therefore what we have decided is that while higher weightage will be assigned for incremental priority sector credit in the identified districts having lower credit flow, a lower weightage would be assigned in identified districts where the credit flow is comparatively higher. Priority sector lending status is also being given to startups and the limits for renewable energy including solar power and compressed biogas plants are also being increased. Uh, there are other measures that are being announced today and I shall be very brief. Uh, number one, introduction of an automated mechanism in, in e kuber system to provide banks more flexibility and discretion in managing their liquidity and maintenance of cash reserve requirements. Number two, while permitting lenders to provide relief to the borrowers through various measures, it is also considered necessary to take appropriate measures for strengthening credit discipline. In view of the concerns emanating from use of multiple operating accounts by borrowers, both current accounts as well as cash credit or overdraft accounts, it has been decided to put in place certain safeguards for opening of such accounts for borrowers availing credit facilities from multiple banks. Uh, number three, the Reserve Bank has constantly endeavored to encourage responsible innovation by entities in the financial service sector in order to further promote and facilitate an environment that can accelerate innovation across the financial sector, the Reserve Bank will set up an innovation hub in India. Further details about the innovation hub would be announced in due course. To enhance safety of check payments, it has been decided to introduce a mechanism of positive pay for all checks of value rupees of rupees 50,000 and above. Operational guidelines in this regard will be issued separately. And finally, a scheme of retail payments in offline mode using cards and mobile devices and a system of online dispute resolution mechanism for digital payments will also be introduced. In conclusion, let me say as follows. At this juncture, the war against COVID-19 is most intense and the world is bracing up for a second wave as it cautiously opens up. The pandemic poses a challenge of epic proportions, but our collective efforts, intrepid choices, innovations and true grit will eventually take us to victory. As Mahatma Gandhi had said, patience and perseverance, if we have them, overcome mountain of difficulties or rather mountains of difficulties, unquote. The challenges of today will only strengthen our resilience and self-belief. We shall remain alert and watchful and collectively do whatever is necessary to revive the economy and preserve financial stability. 
courage and conviction will conquer COVID-19. Thank you very much. All right, that was the RBI governor. He has maintained the status quo on the policy rates. He has also decided to maintain the accommodative stance. Remember, various economists and experts uh, and had expected that he might just overlook a 6% uh, plus inflation rate and bat for reviving growth with a 25 basis point repo rate cut. But that has not happened. He is going on to say that he will maintain this. Also significantly adding the fact that the surge in the COVID-19 cases and the second surge, as he called it, across the world is leading to subdued recovery. And in addition to the repo rate numbers, he's gone ahead to release several other relief mechanisms with lots of relief coming in. Several points they mentioned from the agriculture to the National Housing Bank and uh, restructuring of the MSME as well. Let's quickly go across to my colleague Sakshi to take us through the highlights. Sakshi, lots of surprises there also coming up, uh, The ex uh, apart from just the repo rate. That's right. We heard the RBI governor address everyone at this monetary policy. And rem remember, as our predictions were there, the economists were divided that the key rates may you know, be held or be cut further. So the RBI governor did give in to those expectations. Rates were, of course, the key lending rates were left unchanged. However, of course, many surprises there, like you said. The RBI governor, of course, has said and has acknowledged for the first time that, yes, real GDP will continue to be in negative territory. Remember, since March, the RBI has cut rates by 115 basis points. So the key surprises in today's announcements and the key takeaways, of course, were the fact that, yes, there is an acknowledgement that growth remains a concern. There is an acknowledgement that, of course, inflation and inflationary pressures continue to mount, in particular food inflation. And remember, inflation has been up above the crucial 6% mark. So clearly, that is something we'll have to watch out for. So those were, of course, takeaways on those fronts. However, like he said, away from the taking away from the policy, mm -hmm. taking away from the other points he of course mentioned that supply chains have been disrupted due to the COVID-19 pandemic. That of course will remain a concern. He said exports continue to contract. That of course will also be a concern and an area that the RBI will try and tackle and battle as we continue to look at how to revive the economy. He of course mentioned measures for the MSME sector, acknowledged the fact that they needed further intervention. He also said that yes, of course, further measures are needed for the housing sector as well. Various other sectors were hopeful, but for now, of course, MSME sectors and the housing sector and the rural economy heard the RBI governor say some substantial measures. Of course, he said the loans, remember the key takeaway and the key thing that experts were eyeing into this policy was, of course, how is the restructuring with regards to loans going to happen? So he has said that, of course, loans will be reclassified, which, of course, comes as a breather. Remember, many companies have been facing debt and additional pressure, not only from their suppliers, but also as far as their employees are concerned. Of course, payments have been delayed and really companies, several companies have come to a standstill. So this, of course, comes as a breather. Of course, he said details will need to be looked at. So, of course, we need to see the fine print of these announcements. But the fact that there is an acknowledgement, of course, the RBI lastly saying the accommodative stance will be maintained, which means, the, of course, they will be flexible as to what really is needed for the future course of action. So reassuring words there, the market's giving it a thumbs up, both the Nifty and the Sensex up by over 1% at the moment.